Hello class, today we'll be learning about star constellations. Our first stop on the tour is learning how to find the constellations, so I linked a video clip that will show you what to look for when you are trying to identify some of them. Be sure to pause this video while you are viewing the YouTube clip. Now let's talk about how some of the constellations got their name. Most constellation names are Latin in origin, dating from the Roman Empire, but their meaning often originated in the distant past of human civilization. Scorpius, for instance, was given the name from the Latin word for scorpion, but ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics from before 3000 BC referred to the star group as IP, the Scorpion King. Orion the Hunter bears the Greek name, but had been seen as a hunter hero figure since the times of ancient Babylon. So now let's move on to the constellation known as the Great Bear and the Seven Stars. And this is probably one that everyone has heard of. We also call it the Big Dipper. So if we look at, if we were looking for it in the sky, this is the set of stars we would look for. We'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars. Hence the name Great Bear and Seven Stars. <clears throat> now this is also a part of a, a constellation known as the Ursa Major. And it resembles a bear in many civilizations. The handle of the dipper is the tail of the bear curving away from the bowl. It has seven bright stars, two of these that form the outer wall of the bowl that are called pointers directed towards the polaris when joined in a line from bottom upward. Now let's move on and talk about a different set of constellations. So we just got on talking about the Big Dipper and how it is in the Ursa Major section of the sky. So now we're going to talk about Little Bear and Polaris. Now Little Bear and Polaris is in the Ursa Minor portion and it's located right over here. The Ursa Minor or Little Bear is well known for being the host of the star named Polaris and that's the one that's located right at the top of the tail. And it's positioned very close to the celestial north pole. Actually, <clears throat> the Polaris revolves in a radius of one degree about the north celestial pole. Now Polaris is the brightest star in the Ursa Minor and is a part of seven well-known stars similar to the Big Dipper. The difference is that the handle in it curves towards the bowl, unlike the Big Dipper where it curved away from the bowl. Alright, so here we have our, if we were looking into the sky, we would see Little Bear and Polaris. Now we also call Little Bear uh, the Little Dipper. And so here you see that, that curvature, if you were looking directly into the sky, you'd see how it would be curving towards the bowl. Remember our Big Dipper curved away from it like this. Alright, so let's move on to our next star constellation. Now the next star constellation we're going to talk about is Cassiopeia. Now Cassiopeia will actually lie on the other side of the pole from the Ursa Major. It's actually directly opposite of the Big Dipper. So here we have Cassiopeia. Now with the naked eye, no one can see the seven stars of this constellation. Now, some people will visualize it as part of the crown of the Egyptian queen, Cassiopeia, hence the name. Other, other people see it as an inclined chair or throne. And if we were looking up at the sky to see Cassiopeia, this is what it would look like. So here we have our seven stars, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now let's move on to the next constellation. The next constellation relates very closely to Cassiopeia since it is known as Cepheus. <clears throat> Cepheus sits ne right next to Cassiopeia, and it is known as the husband to Cassiopeia, the queen. 
So Cepheus forms a shape resembling the cap of a crown, as you can see here. Its wedged corner is very close to Polaris, and the brightest star in this constellation is Aldemarian, which is meaning arm. That's this star right here. And it stays close to the queen. <clears throat> now this is what Cepheus would look like if you were trying to identify it in the sky. Now our next constellation is a fan favorite. It's known as Draco the Dragon. This is a very famous constellation that is near the North Pole. Draco the Dragon is actually placed right beneath the Ursa Minor. So it's right beneath the Little Bear and Polaris. So it is the dragon that the giant Hercules faces up to. Two of the known stars are called Edium, which is the tip of the dragon's head. So here we have the tip of the dragon's head right over here. And Thurban, which is in the tail. It's the third of the last star of the dragon. It's located somewhere right in this region right here. So looking up at the, at the sky, here you'd have your Ursa Minor and you'd have Draco. And there's our two brightest stars right here. To conclude our tour, we're going to talk about uh, probably the most well-known star constellation. It's known as the Orion and its brightest stars. Everyone's heard of Orion and Orion's belt. And so that's what we're going to look at right now. So here we have Orion and its brightest stars. So its shape and group of bright stars dominate the winter sky. It contains more bright stars closer together than any other constellation in the sky. So to the, ancient, to the ancients, the figure represents the giant Orion in a heroic gesture holding a shield against, the, against Taurus, which is the mighty bull. And if we were looking at some more constellations, we could actually find Taurus in the sky. So here's his shield right here. And holding upright, it is known as his club that is ready to strike the bull. And so here's a better image of what this constellation would look like and what they're trying to show you. So you have the shield right here. And you have Orion holding up that club, ready to strike Taurus. <clears throat> Alright guys, and that's going to conclude our tour of probably the most famous constellations and the ones pretty much everyone knows about.